Hi you guys, welcome back. I'm out in the garden today getting an early start because I have a little bit of work to do out here. As you probably know if you've been following along with my channel, the folks over at Gardener Supply sent me some of their products to use in shoots for their 2022 catalog. And if you haven't heard about that yet, I'll link a video here where you can learn all about me working with them for their 2022 catalog. And so they've sent me several of their products and the shoot won't be until February but there are a couple products that they need some pictures of beforehand so i'm actually going to take some of those photos for them and i am by no means a professional photographer so i've been out here trying to get i mowed the grass yesterday and weeded it around all the raised beds i'm going to do my best to get the best photos that i can because that's definitely not my area of expertise but uh we're gonna give it a try so i'm going to pull out some of the products that they need the photos of which are pop-up pest protectors and try to see if i can get some good shots <laughs> also before i do that is it not the most gorgeous morning it's a clear blue skies we had a little bit of some cold temps last night so i just pulled the frost blankets off of everything but everything is already opening up for the day and just looking so beautiful i love days like this even easier it just pops out on its own oh so cute okay so these are the products that we're gonna be working with oh i can't wait to use these these will be perfect in the summertime in addition to the pop-up pest protector covers, they also sent me these chicken wire crop covers, which also can be used as pest protection over the bed. And I just wanna show you how cute and how easy these are to put together as well. It comes with two little rectangular pieces, which will be used as a side. And then it also has this piece, which goes like this, so. I'm gonna go like this so it can stay stable. And then all you do is take the corners and you slide it into these little connectors, which I'll show you up first.
sucker for uh, just really classic farmhouse looking things. And this is right up my alley. So this will just go on over the bed. There's also an extension for it. So you would put this down prior if you wanted it taller, if you're, as you know, as plants grow or so. so this also, same thing, has little ways, has these little pins where you can put it together on the side, just little connectors and you can slide it on through. have the extension put together. I have these little ends with a kind of go up so that you can set the original protector. Just slide it in on top. How cute. I have covers for them. just get tied around the bottom with the extension and this gets tied around the top what else and then you also get protective covers that is too cool don't need any product shots of this today so I don't need to have it out but I wanted to show you uh, just opening it and putting it together one thing that I have really loved about everything I've received from Gardner supplies so far is that they are so simple and easy to put together it doesn't take a lot of figuring it out um, most of the time I don't even really need the instructions and I'm able to figure it out with just looking at the product so that's been really really awesome i mean it really doesn't get easier than something that can pop up and even though this didn't pop up it, everything just slides into place really easily and i noticed that about all of the trellising as well i am so excited to put all of these pest protectors to use over the summer i'm currently growing in the winter here right now which means there aren't a lot of pests and there isn't a lot of pest pressure during the colder months here but as summer nears around and spring, that pest pressure is gonna skyrocket. So these are gonna be really put to use and I can't wait to use them. All right, now to see if I can get some of these shots. you guys I think I am done for now and got as many shots as I could um, I've also been kind of communicating back and forth just to make sure that everything looks good but I'm gonna go inside and take a break from the Sun for a little while and I will see you when I see you
this, we had our, well, we've had several freezes already, but we had our first like really hard freeze last night. And so I've just come out to the garden to take off some of these frost blankets and just kind of get a look at how everything is doing. It's also warmed up. It's Last night our low was 22 and then now it's 50 even though it's really windy. So I just want to see how everything is looking and uh, I came out early this morning and checked under the frost blankets and everything was frosty under the frost blanket so I'm feeling a little nervous. So all the pavers are out because I it's been so windy. I'm having to kind of hold the frost blankets down with the pavers. But uh, this looks like it's still alive. But the sensation may come back. But it's looking pretty terrible. I'm honestly amazed like how the calendula is looking because they were definitely really frosty. This is why I love growing calendula in the winter here because it always does good. The kohlrabis looking a little sad <laughs> this is what I'm really nervous about this was a really full tomato plant oh no oh wow well that stinks got moisture wow well, peaches, that's not for you. On the bright side, these kohlrabi are definitely ready. Some of them. Look at this big guy. <laughs> I think these will come spruce back up, even though they just look a little, a little sad. Another dead nasturtium. Are any of these flowering yet? No. The peas look a little, these look a little sad. Peas look a little sad, but they're definitely, these will bounce back. Just everything's looking a little droopy. Beans, they're pretty much goners. I mean, they look like they might still be alive, but I don't think they're really going to grow good after that. And then all my strings got really messed up too. Ooh, that's fun. Little broccoli head. look a little worse for wear but also still alive so that's good uh, arugula galore spinach they had no problem again beans are dead on the bright side this might be my year for beets uh -oh, i just saw an ant these dang ants guys they look they look so good and healthy one of the few things that look healthy. And the borage surprisingly survived that too. That's crazy. It's looking a little worse for wear, but it's alive. This I had a long extra, so I was able to double cover this. So I think that really contributed. The radishes, radishes look sad. They also look like I really need to get these and so so now I think I'm just gonna do some general garden maintenance of putting up all these pavers because I don't think I'm gonna have to put the frost blankets out back for like maybe I mean I don't see another night in my future it looks like it might be warming up a little bit it's still gonna be cold but all the plants that did survive this hard freeze will have no issues with the temperatures it was mainly the beans and the tomatoes and 
really more warm weather things that I was really trying to protect the most. All of them needed to be protected through the hard freeze, but for the cold that we're going to be having now, I don't need to put the blankets back on again. So I'm going to get all of these pavers up. I think I need to harvest these radishes and start some more. Um, they honestly look a little too big. Like they probably, some of them are going to be like pithy and not good. Um, just generally getting the garden clean again. done for the day. Now I think I need to take down these pop-up tomato accelerators. I mean honestly the fact that these tomatoes made it like we're two days shy of February is amazing. Next year I think I definitely would like to try some determinate varieties and get them in the ground a little bit earlier because I got the garden in light. And I think I would have had tomatoes to be honest. I just want to show you how simple these pop-up accelerators are to put away and take together. They seriously just fold down and they have like a toggle, I guess you call it, clasp where you just stick it through the loop and you do that all around the side and your accelerator is put away. So easy. I one of the most impressive things to me because they really I mean just the fact that the tomatoes made it to just about February is awesome so really cool so I could not end this video without showing you all how well the seedlings are already doing I think it's maybe been a week now since I've got everything started and everything is popping up beautifully and starting to show signs of life. So I just want to show you how well everything is doing. We got some trailing nasturtiums in there. Some basil is tiny, starting to show signs of life. All the calendula, of course, sprouted no problem. And the chamomile, lemon monarda is popping up a lot. Yarrow back there. No peppers, which doesn't surprise me because they take a long time. And it's also been a little cool here in the pool house. All the tomatoes are starting to pop up. And then all the zinnias, bachelor buttons, all my lettuces. Everything is just doing so well. There's a little straw flower. Oh, that one looks a little bent. And that looks a little dry. But so far, everything is doing really, really, really well. So the spring seeds are off to a really great start. So even though I had some losses this week, I also have a lot growing and starting and a lot of new growth too. So that's always really, really exciting. And it gets me very, very excited for warmer weather. So I hope you all are doing well and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.